Hello, everybody out there. How are you all doing? I'm Kate Hill bringing you the best and unbiased and honest content on property, along with fantastic hints and tips. Today, stay tuned for a little area report on the Redlands area in Greater Brisbane. So it was probably only 25 years ago or so that this southern coastal area of Greater Brisbane was considered a relatively sleepy seaside community. But back then, home buyers and developers had already started to take notice of its many charms with new residential development from Kapalaba to Cleveland and Mount Cotton to Redland Bay transforming it into the thriving coastal hub that it is today. The Redlands City Council region of Greater Brisbane is affectionately known as the Redlands by locals, as well as those who live in the big smoke up the road. Most Brisbane residents know someone who lives there, or perhaps they did themselves once too. It's also highly likely that they have caught the ferry from Cleveland to the most famous of the southern Moreton Bay Islands, Stradbroke, commonly called Straddy as well. So whatever their history with the place, the Redlands of their youth is no longer, with the region now boasting major infrastructure projects aplenty, a booming local economy and strong demand from home buyers and investors alike. So given the region hugs Moreton Bay, let's take a deep dive into its many charms, shall we? Redland City's economy is diverse, with key sectors including healthcare and social assistance, retail trade, education, training, construction, manufacturing. So all the big ones, basically. The healthcare and social assistance sector is the largest employer, reflecting the city's aging population and the demand for health services. However, new, younger residents are increasingly calling the area home. Retail trade is also a significant part of the local economy driven by the needs of the growing population with a variety of major retail precincts located throughout the region. Kapalaba is the Redlands most popular suburb and is the city's major business and retail centre. The suburb has a bus interchange and a strong road link to much of the Redlands area as well as Eastern Brisbane, the CBD, the Gateway Motorway. The Redlands is also well serviced by Queensland Rail with the Cleveland train line having stations at Thornside and Birkdale, uh, Wellington Point, Ormiston and Cleveland. It was also recently announced that the new Brisbane Metro Electric bus service could extend to the Redlands under a major multi-government proposal to solve a critical public transport shortage before the 2032 Brisbane Olympics. 22 new stations could be built on an extended network to Castletine, uh, Kapalabar, Springwood and the airport through Airport Link, Doomben and DFO, according to a recent news report. Now, the property market in the Redlands has experienced robust growth over recent years, but it is still relatively affordable compared to some of uh, the other parts of Brisbane. The CanStar 2024 Rising Stars report also recently named the Redland suburb of Cleveland as one of 10 Greater Brisbane locations primed for further price growth in 2024. The Redland city component of the Greater Brisbane area has been underrated in the past, but it is attracting more demand for its relative affordable Bayside lifestyle, the report said. Also, Cleveland fronts Moreton Bay, has good infrastructure, commuter train links to central Brisbane. The dwelling mix includes canal residential, which is really pretty. Vacancies are low and the growth record is strong. Units are selling quite quickly here with prices typically in the 500,000s. House prices vary across the region with some suburbs recording a median price above $1 million after strong double digit growth over the past year. That said, there remains a variety of opportunities for home buyers and investors in the area priced well below that figure as long as you know where to look and what to look for, of course. One of the many things that I really love about the Redlands is its property stock, which is predominantly detached houses with many ripe for renovation after being constructed maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Vacancy rates in all suburbs in the Redland Bay LGA are tight and well under the 3% 
limit, which is, um, or the percentage mark, considered a balanced market. This low vacancy rate is driven by strong demand, of course, from both buyers and investors, as well as limited new housing supply in some areas. In fact, the highest vacancy rate was just 1.3% in Capalaba, according to PropTrack data, while the lowest was literally zero in Thornside. These sorts of metrics show a rental market struggling with a severe undersupply of rental housing. Unsurprisingly, given these super low vacancy rates, median asking rents for houses are on the rise. They are up 9% in places like Alexandra Hills in the past 12 months, while median asking rents for units are up 15% in Thornlands during the same period. Ormiston now has the highest median asking rent for houses of $730 a week, units at $700 a week. Yields in the house market range from 3.5% in the more expensive Ormiston to say 6.3% on Russell Island, where property prices are more affordable than the mainland. In the unit market, yields range from around 4.4% in Wellington Point and Redland Bay up to 5.4% in Thornside. Now, without question, the Redlands has more charms than a teenager's Pandora bracelet, but it is also dynamic and growing as an area offers high quality of life, strong local economy, a diverse property market. With this heady mix of coastal and suburban living, ongoing infrastructure projects and strong population growth, Redland City is, I think, poised for continued success as one of Brisbane's thriving regions. Now, I will keep you posted on all things property, of course, from around Australia as our year progresses. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you are enjoying all the free content. And I will see you all soon. Bye.